Welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about Teddy Roosevelt's trip down the Amazon. With little experience in the jungle, the 55-year-old Teddy Roosevelt traveled to Brazil and set out on a journey down the unknown tributary of the Amazon. He would be going down the mysterious river of doubt. Roosevelt described this adventure as his last chance to be a boy, but I think, as you'll see later on, it wasn't going to be such a pleasant trip. So Roosevelt received a letter from Argentina inviting him to give a series of lec lectures in South America. Not only did he agree, he decided to complement his lecture tour with his trip on the Great River down the two tributaries of the Amazon. Before leaving for the continent in October, he contacted the Museum of Natural History and recruited two naturalists planning to collect animal specimens during the expedition. After consulting his guide and experienced Brazilian explorer, Colonel Candido London, he scrapped his original itinerary and set out across the River of Doubt, a wild and winding channel unknown to Europeans. The director of the American Museum of Natural History tried to warn him of the risks, but Roosevelt dismissed his concerns, saying, If it is necessary for me to leave my bones in South America, he wrote, I am quite ready to do so. So, in late 1913, after Roosevelt had completed his lecture tour, the Roosevelt Rondon expedition began. In addition to a small army of porters, explorers, and scientists, the team also included Roosevelt's 23 year old son, Kermit, who lived in Brazil at the time. The adventurers first traveled by steamboat to the remote town of, and I might not say this correctly, but Tapiropan? I think that's I think that's wrong, but Tapiropan, we'll go with that. From there, they embarked on his two-month overland trek to the River of Doubt. Roosevelt still had a bullet in his chest from a failed assassination attempt during a campaign in 1912. But Roosevelt soon impressed his comrades with his seemingly endless endurance. Overall, however, the expedition did not get off to a promising start. Tropical disease struck several men while crossing the rugged Brazilian highlands and more than half of the men of the group died of exhaustion. And half of these men died of exhaustion before reaching the River of Doubt in February of 1914. Supplies were scarce, forcing Roosevelt and Rondon to downsize their team. The voyage down the River of Doubt was a difficult one, but when the explorers set out down the river, the conditions became even more grim. As they traveled down the river and dug out canoes, the men faced all sorts of dangers, from crocodiles and piranhas to hostile natives. And each time they stopped on the banks of the river to set up camp, they were overwhelmed by what Roosevelt called the pain and menace of mosquitoes and biting flies. Roosevelt had another encounter where he was almost bitten by a coral snake. Luckily, its fangs only dug into his leather boot, but if he was actually bitten by the snake, he most likely would have died. Teddy later wrote, The lofty and matted forest rose like a green wall on either hand. The journey began in calm waters, but by early March the explorers had covered dozens of kilometers. And throughout this they encountered the dozens of winding rapids. The men had to shoot down rapids in their canoes or traverse the wilderness with a boat on their backs. And because of this, their advance slowed to seven miles a day, and after several shipwrecks during the crossing, they had to repeatedly stop and build new canoes. On March 15th, Kermit's canoe was sucked into a whirlpool and thrown over a waterfall. The good thing was, though, Kermit and one other man were able to swim ashore before they were sucked down into the whirlpool. However, one man that was on the canoe was sucked down into the whirlpool, and he drowned because of that. And the expedition's problems only increased over the next few weeks. The explorers were being pursued by a band of Indians. Rondon found his dog shot through with an arrow, and they were always nervous about an ambush. The natives eventually let them go through the jungle, but even without having to worry about the Indians, the team was still plagued by malaria, dysentery, and a lack of supplies. They began to suffer, and morale hit rock bottom in early April when a porter named Julio shot and killed another Brazilian man he caught stealing food. After failing to catch the killer, they just let him run loose and abandon him. The remaining 19 explorers continued down the river, but their scientific expedition turned into a battle for survival. Their clothes became rags, 
and only catching fish and scrounging for palm hearts saved them from hunger. Once one of the strongest members of the team, Roosevelt, was driven insane by a fever and an infection. He repeatedly requested to be left alone in the jungle to die, but Kermit refused to let him die in the jungle alone. Quote, there were many good days, a good many mornings, when I looked at Colonel Roosevelt and said to myself, he won't be with us tonight. Naturalist George Cherry later remembered, quote, and I would say the same in the evening. He can't possibly live until morning. Because of this, Roosevelt ended up losing a, about a quarter of his body weight, but he stubbornly held through and even endured emergency leg surgery on a riverbank. As the former president laid in his canoe, Rondon and the other explorers tried to find waters that led to civilization. And with the aid of, and I'm going to completely butcher this as well, but Serengueros, which were Brazilian pioneers who lived in the jungle and harvested rubber, the men acquired new canoes and traversed the last few sections of the rapids. And so finally, on April 26, the team sighted a relief party that Rondon had previously ordered to meet them at the confluence of the River of Doubt and the Arapuana River. Though still sick, Roosevelt beamed with pride. In typical stoic fashion, he dashed off a telegram to the Brazilian government in which called the nightmare expedition, quote, a hard and somewhat dangerous but very successful trip. So think about it, your son almost dies. A ton of other people die, a ton of people go crazy, you get a fever, an infection, almost get bit by a deadly snake, almost die many times, and this is what you have to say. Roosevelt received medical attention as soon as the group reached civilization, and by the time he returned to New York in May of 1914, he was strong enough to walk the gangplank of the ship and greet a large crowd of admirers. A few critics tried to dispute his claim that the expedition had, quote, put upon a map a river nearly 1,500 kilometers in length, but he later won over most of the skeptics during an extended lecture tour. So in 1926, another group of researchers repeated the river voyage and confirmed nearly all of the ge geographical results of the Roosevelt Rondon expedition. By then, the Brazilians had given the River of Doubt a new name, Roosevelt River. While Roosevelt would remember his time in the Amazon as one of his greatest adventures, it was also his last. His stint in the jungle had taken its toll and for the rest of his days, he was plagued by a collection of ailments. He called his old Brazilian trouble. The venerable Bull Moose stayed active and even attempted to volunteer for World War I. But he finally died in his sleep in 1919 at the age of 60. Quote, death had to take him sleeping, Vice President Thomas Marshall said at the time. For if Roosevelt had been awake, there would have been a fight. So... I think this is just another reason to show why Theodore Roosevelt was a great man. And I had done a couple videos relating to him on the past. I did the one great man video and then I did two, uh, two videos on two of his speeches. So I think this was a good addition, kind of explaining a more specific thing he did. Showing how not only did he almost die multiple times, but so did his own son. And... How he dealt with it was very, uh, it was manly, and it was respectable. He handled it like a great man would handle it, which is exactly what he was. And if you'd like to give me any recommendations for another video, then I'd be happy to hear them. So thank you guys very much, and I'll see you guys next time.